Underwater videographers specialize in a variety of subjects, but nature is among the most common, yet the subjects are the most difficult to capture. Lance Milbrand is an underwater videographer who has specialized in wildlife films for the last 27 years. My name is Lance Milbrand, and I'm a, a filmmaker, a small video production company called Milbrand Cinema, and I shoot both underwater and topside. Well, I studied industrial arts at San Diego State University, and my emphasis was in illustration. But the thing that taught me uh, the most important thing you can learn in filmmaking is to be on time. And I learned that playing football. Because if you're not early or on time for a film job, then you won't be asked back again. You know, back in college, I thought about how can I make a living in the ocean? And I was thinking about, hmm, maybe I could uh, pop abalones for a living or collect sea urchin. But there was a lot of people in San Diego who were really influential in filmmaking. And I tried to grab their coattails and learn from them. And uh, I, I bought my own equipment and, and just went out and tried to do it myself. Well, paid videography came in increments for me. I uh, applied for a small grant and was awarded a tide pool film with kids. Uh, and then I also got a job working for uh, the diving industry uh, called Be a Responsible Diver. The technical knowledge I needed to become a filmmaker was in, for the most part, three distinct areas. I wanted to be a, a producer, a cameraman, and an editor. And the producer has to sell himself to, to get the next job and to do the first job proficiently. The cameraman has to hold the camera really steady, show wide, medium, and close-up shots, and know how to get from point A to point B. And the editor has to make it all come together in a cohesive fashion. You may wonder why I'm sitting here in the redwood forest. Well, as a filmmaker, you can really live anywhere and travel to anywhere that the airport will take you. So uh, in my career, um, I've been to a lot of places around the world, uh, but I'm finding this habitat, believe it or not, in the forest um, hasn't been documented very much in the rivers and creeks. So that's where I'm working now. My job has brought me to some really unique locations around the world. Um, once I was hired to shoot underwater beauty shots for a CBS Survivor and uh, I just went around Palau looking for beautiful things underwater. Um, Another time I assisted Howard Hall pushing the big IMAX camera for over 150 days at Cocos Island, Costa Rica. And a place that I really like to go to and shoot underwater is uh, the Yucatan cave systems down in Acumal and Tulum. A typical day is sun up to sundown. Uh, you're working throughout the day diving and the only limiting factor could be uh, your decompression requirements. Uh, but if you find something really interesting at the end of the day, you're going to go night diving and shoot that as well. But then after you're done night diving, you, you get the gear prepped for the next morning. So you could be working 16 hour, 18 hour days. A uh, wildlife filmmaker, what I do, um, you have to understand the animals inside their habitat. And they normally do, you know, three or four things. They, they're having sex, they're, they're fighting over sex, uh, they're eating or they're giving birth. Uh, uh, looking at the other side of the coin, the Hollywood filmmaker, most of their shots are set up. So they have uh, a shot list and they're looking for specific things and then checking them off as they go. Uh, with, with wildlife filmmaking, you're not really sure what's going to happen next. So that's the difference between the two. I once worked for National Geographic on my own project where they left me on a deserted island called Clipperton Atoll, which was a sunken volcano. And I had to create sequences uh, between the transition of water and land. And one shot I was really proud of uh, was a moray eel that left the tide pool, came up and grabbed a land crab and went back into the ocean. One job I really enjoyed had to do with filming whale sharks feeding off the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Um, it wasn't a uh, sit by and watch them swim by type of job. I had to put the camera in front of me and swim literally as fast as I could and get in front of them as they came by feeding. And 
And uh, it was really exciting. Filming in fresh water is something I really like to do. Uh, but there's some technical challenges uh, that you have to adapt the housing to become more buoyant uh, by adding floats to it. Uh, most recently, I've worked on a film uh, for the National Marine Fisheries Service on a federally endangered steelhead. And I'm, I'm pursuing a project on California newt, which is a salamander that lives right here in the forest. What I like most about my job might not be these flies or that crow, but I get to work outdoors and create films that have art to me and, and build something that, was, that started with nothing. And I make things that are appreciated by people and I get paid for it. And so it's a win-win for me. The most difficult aspect of underwater filmmaking is having continuity between jobs. Um, as an independent, there's, there's periods of time, could go weeks, could go months, when you're not being paid a salary, and it's up to you as an independent producer to keep that money coming in. So you have to make your own destiny and have jobs lined up and, and keep it going. I might hold a record for 77 bags brought on one expedition with National Geographic, but I recently went on a trip on my own down to the Yucatan to do some cave diving, and I brought 11 bags, and plus two carry-ons. I can think of dangerous jobs uh, being uh, weather dependent, but some of the scariest situations I've been had to do with diving with people I've never been in the water with before, and depending upon them to do certain things and then having to uh, drop the camera and help them. So uh, the people that you're diving with might be an asset, but then again, they could be a liability. And you have to uh, keep your senses about you and make sure that um, everything uh, and everyone comes back up safely. Between jobs, when I don't have anything lined up right away, I'll go out with my own camera and shoot, some, shoot something in nature that is really rewarding when I come home and view it. And I say to myself, you know, this is where I belong. And um, I'm glad that I don't have another job, a, a nine to five job. My advice for a person starting out in this business is to follow your passion and keep with it as long as you can. Um, be tenacious and uh, learn the technology um, have a spouse that's understanding and um, doesn't matter where you live but uh, be grounded and try and be humble and uh, don't give up.